And it's also the only thing that I've ever taken, and the only medical thing that I've ever taken that has just got rid of my anxiety. Exercise really helps, but it doesn't, it, it, even that, even intense exercise does not relieve it as much as this stuff. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video with me, Thomas Henley from Asperger's Grove. And today, as you can probably tell by the name of the video, um, and also these lovely products in front of me, I will be taking you through what I take on semi semi daily basis if I remember, uh, to help my depression and to help my anxiety and to help my ADHD type symptoms that I have. So I just want to clarify first is that I am not a registered GP and um, I don't currently even have a uh, degree yet in um, medical science, uh, biomedical science rather. So any advice, I'm not giving any advice, but anything that you see here or stuff that I'm taking, I'm not recommending that you take it. Um, I just thought I'd take you through some of the, the different things that I take, the supplements, the um, prescribed medication. Um, the tea and stuff that I drink in order to um, keep myself above water. A lot of people downplay the, the role of supplements in helping with depression and anxiety. They are quite a big and um, important factor in it and they have, they have been shown in numerous like scientific studies to have a, a, a large effect on it but not many people seem to um, pick that up and use it which is abysmal to me. So. Let's get into the video. As you can tell, I'm very tired because I got no sleep last night again. I don't know whether it's these buddy... These won't help. And basically, I had a uh, UTI, urinary tract infection, when I was in Thailand. Sorry if it's t TMI for you. Get those out of the way. So yeah, I'm going to start first by showing you my prescription medication. This is uh, metrazapine. Um, obviously, it's going to be flipped because of the the video. Um, these are metrazapine uh, thirty milligram coated tablets. I take fifteen milligrams, which is the half of the tablet. So I'll give you a lowdown um, of my experience with these. Um, I, it's not the first antidepressant that I've taken. I've taken fluoxetine in the past and um, many other anti-anxiety drugs like uh, beta blockers and short-term relief like benzodiazepines and stuff, but you, you don't want to touch that stuff. Um, or this, if you can help it. So metrazapine is a weird drug. I did talk about it in one of my previous videos. It's not this as it's not the same as other drugs and other antidepressants like Prozac, Foxtine, um, Zetralopan, all, all those kind of antidepressants. It's, it's quite different. It's not a typical SSRI, which is one of the main antidepressants in the market right now. Um, I'm talking to, talking about it like it's some kind of <laughs> fashion trend or something. So yeah, I've been taking these for two years, I think. Yeah, two years. Uh, I started on 30 milligrams, couldn't cope with it, too much weight gain, too much, uh, couldn't get up in the morning feelings and they have a very large sedative effect, so they usually prescribe to people who struggle sleeping, like myself. Um, but the thing is with these things is that it makes it a lot harder, and I'm also a lot worse than most people getting up in the bed in the morning, so it's not great for me. Other things, which may not just be due to this antidepressant, just antidepressants in general, is that although they stabilise my negative emotions and make them a bit less intense, they also do that with the the positive emotions as well, which is um, something that I think is a very flawed aspect of antidepressants, and you should really take that into account. It makes you more like a zombie rather than gets rid of your negative emotions. It, it kind of if you imagine like your yourself is like a amplitude, like a, a sound wave, it just kind of squashes it all together, so it doesn't like deviate much from the middle. It's not the uh, my favourite thing. I don't like taking them. Uh, I wouldn't want 
people to take them unless they've you know they've tried everything else um, I was very readily taking them when I was younger because um, I had diagnosed with um, depression, I had uh, severe depression at times and moderate depression just like as a, as a baseline. Kind of shifts down to mild nowadays which I'm quite happy about. It's probably all this amazing work I'm doing. Why did I do that? You can tell that I'm tired. I'm very tired. I'm not tired. I know that I'm tired but I don't feel tired. Do you get me? So yeah, these things, they act on serotonin receptors, which are typical antidepressant targets. And they also act on the noradrenaline parts of your, your brain as well. And noradrenaline receptors, typically like they, they produce very different, some different effects compared to other ones. It's also a an antihistamine, which I do not like taking because antihistamines have got a bad rep in the science community right now for bad side effects and uh, you know implications with diseases and stuff so I'm gonna try and get off these as soon as I can. Don't take these unless you have to. Next thing that I'm gonna show you and I think I'll go with them in order of getting them is my multivitamin. Let's take these in general for health. Um, I got them for exercise initially but they obviously help with you know, um, energy and stuff, just in B12, I mean, it's in everything, but especially in like commercial products and energy drinks and stuff, but it's got magnesium in, which is good for like nerve um, damage, like help, not good for nerve damage, it prevents nerve da damage um, to some degree. Some other random uh, assortments of vitamins, you can have a look and take a screenshot and flip it around if you really that bothered about it. And I've taken the label off, so you can't, I can't even tell you where they're from. <laughs> Sorry about that. In terms of multivitamins, this is probably not the best, because any multivitamins that aren't made out of food sources, there's some brand that I can't remember, but any, any, food, any food supplement that you can get is a lot better than the sort of artific artificial manufacturing of it. For example, like calcium carbonate is usually added into this stuff for a calcium supplement but it's not really shown to absorb as well because it's basically like just eating limestone and you could always do with a little vitamin boost even if they don't work they'll just be wished down the toilet the next one um which one is the next one like that ah vitamin d vitamin d vitamin d is very important especially if you're actually especially for both people and if you're a bodybuilder vitamin d is really important in um maintaining bone strength it helps like get the calcium in and stuff um, that's not the reason why i take it um, a lot of people can be deficient in vitamin d and it can it can hurt their immune function and stuff and um, and because of my anxiety and stuff my immune function drops quite a lot so i need all these things to kind of bring it up so that i don't get chronically sick such a happy person, aren't I? This has got calcium carbonate as well in, so I'm getting a lot of, eating a lot of limestone today. I just take one a day, which is like 500% the recommended daily allowance, which is, it's not a bad thing for the Mindy, it's just, you just your body just won't use it. Um, so that's good, especially if you don't live in places that are nice and sunny. If you, if you live in places that are nice and sunny, just throw this off the table. But have a look at it first, yeah. So the next one is... Omega-3, these things, again, take a screenshot, flip it around if you really want to, there you go. This is fish oil, um, fish oil has a lot of um, omega-3 fatty acids, uh, DH, DHA and EPA, um, both are very important in maintaining brain health, growth, Repair, all those kind of things. Fatty acids, very important. You can see, you, you hear like people saying, eat your fish and stuff, it'll help your brain and it'll help you with memory and all of that. And then there was a big, there was a big craze with it when it came out, all the parents buying it for the kids and uh, I was one of them with my mum buying it. These ones are salmon fish oil and it has about, I just take one or two a day. It has about a thousand milligrams. That's not gonna mean anything. It's got, 180 EPA 
and 120 DHA. And this is in Thai because I got them in Thailand, so I'm not sure about the, the actual like dosage. Uh, so the typical dose for this for helping with depression and anxiety um, is having about what about 300 milligrams as I re I've read. Um, it's usually important to get this stuff in because it helps with inflammation which is implicated in depression and also like it helps your brain and it keeps it all nice and healthy. Next one is I'm gonna go with green tea which is my mug now. Do you like it? It's a scanning electron microscope image of something that I cannot remember. Green tea is one of the best sources of caffeine that you can drink in my opinion and in a lot of other people's opinion because green tea has a high level of L-theanine and it's important in uh, synthesis of serotonin, it keeps your serotonin all healthy and stuff in your brain which is one of the things that you're deficient in when you're um, more depressed and stuff um, so it can help with that and it can help keep the regulation of it up and all that and it has been shown to be one of the best sources of caffeine as well if you like your caffeine and you're anxious try green tea it's a lot less jittery uh, you don't get as lot of the physical effects that you get with the coffee I found. And then you also get the anti-anxiety effects of the L-theanine. I don't know why I'm showing you this cup. The next one, I've got three left, three for you. Next thing is Balance Rhodiola Complex. Um, Rhodiola Rosea, I hope I said that right. I do know a lot about these things, trust me, like, but I always forget about the names and I can never link them to. That's why Google is a good source. So basically this is, it's not a very potent amount of rhodiola. The rhodiola root extract that's used in it, which is like the, the main ingredient for the sale of this, is about 62.5 milligrams. And the active dose on a lot of the science papers that have, or well, one of the science papers that I read about it, said that the optimum dose is between like 200 going up to some some other value. So two, I just take 200 of this, 250, um, because I'm a little bit bigger. So I just want to make sure that I get enough. And this also has magnesium in as well, which I said it's good for protecting those neurons, protecting those brains, stop it from getting damaged. Very important also in maintaining energy and re resisting fatigue, which is usually associated with anxiety and depression, so throw it in, it'll be good for you. This also contains a type of ginseng root extract, which is one of the things that I'm going to come on to next, which I have, I'm not taking these two together, obviously, because then I get a, a big dose of it. It's around about 200, 250 for ginseng as well, so when I, when I take about four or five tablets of these, which I'm trying to do, I need to get a better source of this to be honest. The reason why you would take rhodiola is because um, it has had quite scientifically marked, marketed, marketed, marked effects on serotonin um, and dopamine as well. So it helps, I find, when I take it with my antidepressants, it, it um, raises my, you know, pleasure from things which is considerably dampened down from the antidepressants. It's also an adaptogen and it has all sorts of different benefits such as energy and mood and all those kind of things. It's been used for a long time for natural herb remedies and stuff um, so that's why I take it. I am aware that it could have some um, issues with the antidepressant but I've, I've researched it as much as I can and um, I've talked to some people about it and Although there's not much research done into this, it doesn't seem to be that much of an issue, to be honest. I've been taking it for a while and it hasn't impacted me. But, as I said again, I'm not licensed. I'm just telling you what I take, okay? So don't go taking all of this stuff just because I told you so. I didn't tell you so. I'm trying desperately to, like... <laughs> I'm trying desperately to not 
seem like I'm trying to sell something, but I just I just want to show you guys what I take because I thought it was quite hilarious. I looked over at my my desk over there with all my supplements that have lined up, and it's just like some kind of pharmaceutical store or something. This is the ginseng. Ginseng it has the same sort of effects with as rhodiola, not the serotonin type effects, but it also has um, other nice effects like um, help with sexual dysfunction, um, which is good if you, you know depression is um, depression affects that. So it's it's one of the important things that you want to get get right, isn't it? Definitely, and also some antidepressants as well can lower it as well. So good thing I think. It also helps with your testosterone levels. So you might want to check that out if you like your bodybuilding and stuff. And it's really good for energy as well. It's also an adaptogen. So it promotes vitality and counteracts fatigue. The typical ginseng type is Panax ginseng, which is not this one. So if you're going to buy one, get that one. Make sure that it is high grade and it's for a reputable people if you're going to take it, which I'm not telling you to. Okay. Yeah. Last thing on my list, which is something that I have added recently and has been an absolute, absolute lifesaver for me. I'm going to do a whole video on this and the experiences that I've had um, over like one or two weeks of taking it, if I can find some more because it's run out. Um, one thing that you need to know about me is that my drug, you don't need to know about it, I'm just, I'm going to tell you anyway, okay? I have a really high like drug tolerance, especially to like CBD oil, alcohol, caffeine. I've got a really high tolerance to those, so I usually have to take a bit of a bigger dose. But this one is ridiculous. I don't know whether it's just because I'm so incredibly anxious and jittery all the time. But what the, the prescribed on here is to have one to two drops or sprays under the tongue twice a day. And I found that it had an effect when I took it into about the seven or eight drops per day, um, which is obviously not good because it's all run out in a very short amount of time and I need to get some more. Um, and so this is the it's Live Well um, Oral CBD, uh, 2000 milligrams, uh, 20%. I'm just listing off numbers here. So these things are very new supplements. Uh, I would advise, if you can, maybe wait until a bit more research is done with it. Um, if you're really struggling with your anxiety and you really can't cope and you're gonna be doing something stupid, maybe give it a, a bit of a Google, ask your doctor about it. I know a lot of doctors recently have been actually pointing their patients like, under the table just to like try it out because it's just, such an amazing thing for well for me it has been and for my friend it helps a lot as well yeah, CBD basically it just it reduces a lot of my thoughts repetitive thought cycles that I have when I've got anxiety and it's also the only thing that I've ever taken any only medical thing that I've ever taken that has just got rid of my anxiety exercise really helps but it doesn't, it, it, even that, even intense exercise does not relieve it as much as this stuff. It can cause a bit of sedate, sedative effect, um, but obviously, like, I'm very up with sedatives. I've, I've had them for a long time. Sounds like I'm taking a bunch of horse tranquilizers. Um, but the metrazapine is a, is, a <laughs> is a sedative, so I'm quite used to them. And when I take this stuff with the ginseng and the rhodiola and all the other stuff that I'm pumping into my body, it doesn't seem to have as much of a sedative effect and I can get on with my day. It's also had really good effects for my studying, it lets me just get on with stuff, like I don't think about the small things too much, I'm just like I need to do that so I'll do it, rather than I need to do that but I could do this or, or maybe if I thought about this in a different way, I'll, I'll watch a YouTube video to see whether I should do that. It removes all that kind of nonsense and it helps a lot in the morning. Um, I get a bit agoraphobic in the morning. I don't want to go outside because of people. And it's very comfy in my room and all safe and isolated. So, um, yeah, it really helps a lot. I really hope I can get it in maybe a higher dose and more of it 
for a lower price, but it's very expensive now because the tax rate is, is like sky high for obvious reasons because it is a it is an active compound and it does have a lot of active effects on you if you take it. And it's not currently standardized in medicine or it's not it's not being given to people and um, by doctors or anything. So yeah, just just be aware of this. Maybe give it a try if, if you really need it or consult your doctor about it. Again, I'm not saying take this. I'm not even saying this will help you. It could make you, you know, worse. I don't, I don't know how, but <laughs> like I can't imagine it would. But I just want to make sure that you guys know that I'm not trying to push the positive effects on these of these things that I've got over here um, onto you. I just want to show you what I do and what what, what I try to do to minimize my issues. So yes, that's been the, going back from order, the CBD oil, the Korean ginseng, which I am not taking until I have got rid of this rhodiola. It's the rhodiola, rhodiola extract, rhod, rhodiola rosé, and this also has the ginseng in it, a different type, it's Siberian. I have the Amiga Free oil, good for me, vitamin D, green tea, which I like and replaces coffee, multivitamin and my favourite, the old antidepressants, the old zombie, zombie drugs. So this has been a little collection of the things that I take, um, it looks like a lot when I put it out in front of me. When I was buying it and thinking about the things that I take, it, it didn't seem that it would be this much. Let's get these out of here. This has been quite a long video and I'm very tired, so my video making skills and my talking skills are not as good. Um, again, just want to highlight, just in case anyone's not got the right message already, since I've said it loads. I'm not saying take any of these, I'm just saying, telling you what I've taken, the positive effects that I've had off stuff, the negative effects that I've had off stuff, just as a plain thing out there. And if you want to look into this stuff, you can always consult your doctor when you do this kind of thing, because I'm not a registered medical practitioner and I'm not, you know, a registered um, graduate of or anything, to be honest, right now. And um, well, I will be. But yeah, I hope you found this interesting, if anything, just to know what I do to try and help myself alongside water, exercise. I would like to say correct diet, but my diet is absolutely terrible. Get your diet in check. You reduce that inflammation, reduce that sugar. You don't need a lot of sugar. In. If you're having a lot of sugar, get rid of it. You don't need it. Even though it's like the most addictive thing on the planet. That's a lie. It's pretty addictive, though. Especially since it's very accepted by people. Going off on a tangent here, guys. Um, thank you very much for watching. I bow at your knees, you handsome, beautiful bunch of people. And make sure to comment. Comment your thoughts. Comment some videos that you would like in the future. Ask me some questions. Give, give me a breakdown of what do you think about each of these wonderful tablet form remedies and I don't know, remedies? I'm being very anxious on the whole remedy and positive effects thing. I don't want to give off the wrong impression for YouTube and get banned. But yeah, love you guys and I'll see you in the next video. I was going to come back and do something cool, but you can see me in the mirror. <laughs>